I'm going to find the volume of the solid of revolution created by the line y equals x squared, or bounded by that equation, x equals 3 in the x-axis. Uh, so we're looking at this region right here. And um, in a previous video, I've shown this using what's often referred to as the washer method, basically taking the outer volume minus the inner volume, um, that approach. Um, this time I'm going to show that this also can be done very, very easily using what's called the shell method. And the shell method is a very different way of, of visualizing a volume. Uh, but basically you're creating infinitely thin little cylindrical shells. Okay, and those little shells are going to look something like this. Imagine this being kind of hollowed out. Um, it has a certain thickness, but it's basically just a cylindrical shell, and you're stacking those inside each other. Um, imagine, you know, stacking cups inside each other or something like that. Or I've used the example of a roll of toilet paper where you're rolling around, rolling around, or a roll of paper. Um, but the idea here is, and very often cylindrical shells are used when you have something cut out of the center. Uh, the difference here is you don't have to subtract anything. Um, it just adds up those volumes. And so what happens is you'll start with very small cylindrical shells and they get higher and higher and higher. So the outer part will be very high, the inner parts will be very low, and that will create that depression inside this volume. So uh, first of all, to draw what this would look like, each of those shells is going to have a point that's on the original curve, and of course that would come around to the other side as well. And that of course is a circle, and the shell will have a height that's basically the height of that graph, and that shell has a thickness. Okay, and so I'll usually draw that thickness kind of like this, and that's the key. If I can find the volume of one of those shells, I can start with the shells out here that go all the way up, and I can continue to move in, finding smaller and smaller shells, and what happens is you just keep finding those shells, adding up the big ones all the way down to the small ones, and that gives you the volume of the entire solid. Um, now, how do you find the volume of one of those shells? Well, if you think about it, that's really just the label on a can, okay? Um, you know, you can take that shell and you can open it up, and so if you had something shaped like this and you um, unroll it, take that wrapper off that can, uh, you get something that basically looks like this, okay? Uh, there is your roll of plastic, and if you unravel it, it looks something like this, has very thin thickness. Um, but if you think about finding the volume of that piece of plastic, um, this length here is what it takes to go all the way around. That's the circumference, which is 2 pi r. Uh, of course, this is the height. That's still going to be the height. And that width is some kind of thickness. Um, I'm going to call the thickness th. Now, I know that kind of creates problems with variables there. You can call it a width or something like that as well. Um, but I'm going to use th to represent thickness. So the volume of one of those is 2 pi r times h times the thickness, 2 pi r h th. So the volume of one of these cylindrical shells, 2 pi r h th, and again, remember that that's just representing the thickness. Probably would be better to use one variable there, but hey, that's how I learned it. So anyway, uh, just need to set that up. That's all that's happening here. Uh, dv is equal to 2 times pi times the radius. Now the radius in this case of this thing, of course, is going to be going out to here. That radius is x. Okay. The height is a y value. Uh, very often in the shell method, you're going to have an x and a y value in your equation. So it tends to work nicely when you can solve for one variable or the other. And then the thickness of that thing. Notice that's a width in the x direction. That's going to be a dx. And that tells me that my equation needs to be written in terms of x. So um, I can replace y with an x squared. And the final equation is going to be an interval. An integral now, the sum of these shells, again, starting out here with this large shell and extending all the way down to you know, smaller and smaller shells as we get lower and lower down and going inward. Um, and so it's 2 pi times the radius of x times the height of x squared times dx. Obviously, you can rewrite that as an x cubed if you'd like. And the important thing here is, remember, you're adding up these shells based on the thickness. And that's starting out at 3 and going in to 0. 
Remember, you don't continue over to the other side because you're spinning those things. And so when you pick a radius of three, it's spinning over here and hitting negative three as well. So be careful with that. You just go back to the axis of rotation. So three into zero, it's in terms of x. And some version of that integral is going to be your final answer there. This is a classic example of a case where cylindrical shells are very useful and in fact uh, maybe about your only method to be able to do one of these problems. Um, if I've got the graph of y equals negative x squared plus 4x, which is a parabola that goes like this, um, let's say that this is bounded by uh, this equation and the x-axis. And then I want to find the volume of the solid created when it's rotated around the y-axis. Okay, so what that's going to create is basically another one of these kind of humps over here. And then you have to imagine that this is being spun. Okay, it would be almost like a bunt cake uh, type shape where you've got kind of an outer uh, thing that goes in like this. Um, anyway, it's, it's uh, loosely speaking, it's going to be shaped something kind of like uh, this, where it goes down to the inside, but then it's hollowed out uh, on the inside as well. So... Uh, again, a little, a little hard to draw that, but it kind of dips inward and, and has a section missing in, in the center there. Um, actually, that's not even very accurate because it's actually going, uh, basically going kind of inward like that on the inside. So a little bit hard to visualize, but uh, something kind of like that. Hopefully, uh, in your hand, you can get some kind of image of what's happening. Um, but anyway, the big problem you run into here is, originally you say, well, there's a hole in the middle. So I'll use pi big R squared H minus pi little r squared H, uh, take the outer volume minus the inner volume, and here's where you run into a problem. When you draw your strip perpendicular to the axis of rotation, so I'm rotating around this axis right here, well, when you draw your strip in, you get a problem. You can find this radius and you can find that radius. Okay, this radius is going to be an x value. That one's going to be an x value. The problem, you're subtracting from the same graph over to the same graph. So for example, uh, these are going to be in terms of dy. You're going to be stacking these. Uh, you're going to need to write your equation in terms of y. Well, you're going to have x here that you need to write in terms of y minus another x that you need to write in terms of y. What's the same equation being subtracted from the same equation? The point is, these points come from the same graph as those points. There's not a second line to be taking those points from. And so you're subtracting something from itself. And of course, when you do that in an equation, you're going to get 0, even though we all know that width is not actually 0. But there's no way, uh, because you have two possible x coordinates on that graph for that same y value, uh, there's no way to distinguish between those two, or at least not an easy way to do that. So, this is the place where shells are just unbelievably useful because you can draw shells in here and just have shells follow along this curve, starting over at this x-coordinate, moving all the way over to this x-coordinate, and it'll work great. So if you remember, the volume of one of those shells is 2 pi r h t h. Okay, remember that's the thickness there. I don't have a one variable way of explaining that. Um, and if you remember, the whole idea of the shell is you pick a point on your curve and you've got this shell that passes through that point, looks something kind of like this, and you just need to get the radius of that shell and the height and you can basically fill everything in there. So, take a look at this. Uh, dv, of course, is going to be, okay, 2 pi times the radius. Radius here, that's an x comma y point. Radius, of course, is going to be x. The height, just the y value. Okay, it's not going down here. Don't have to subtract anything. Just the y value. The thickness, it's a width in the x direction, so that's a dx. Tells me that everything needs to be written in terms of x. So I know that y is equal to uh, negative x squared plus 4x. Now, if everything had to be written in terms of y, um, and you're going to have to solve this for x. Probably not a good approach for shell method. So in this case, though, y is negative x squared plus 4x. And so you take your integral. It's 2 pi times the x value radius times the height times the thickness. And remember, your bounds are always going to be based on your dx, your dy. So we're starting over here. Um, 
That's our first value, and we have this little thickness that's going all the way along here, starting at 4. Remember, you only go back to the axis of rotation because every single time you pick one of those radii, it's getting rotated all the way around. So it's going to include all those negative values. So it basically goes from the outer edge to the axis of rotation. That's just from 0 to 4, and you have your final integral.